Welcome back, Math 30-1. Today we're looking at angular measures and radians. So what is a radian, you might be asking? Well, a radian is a measure of the ratio between our arc length and the radius. So let's take a look here. If I have an arc length, like let's say just this here, and I want to know what the radian is, well, that's going to be the ratio between this and my radius, which is right here. Okay? So now, with that in mind, let's think about this a bit more. This arc length is an arc, and it's kind of like a circle. So the circumference of a circle is equal to pi times diameter. Or we could also put it as 2 pi times the radius. Okay? Now, if we put this in other words, we want to know what fraction of the radius we have here. So I have to divide by my radius. So that's kind of what's happening here. And we're dividing by just a bit more than the radius. So in other words, it is a fraction of the circumference. It's like what fraction of the circumference is being used. And that's kind of what we might want to think of radians. So now if we look at this a little bit more, we have right here, uh, one complete rotation is the same as how many degrees? Well, all the way around is the same as 360 degrees. So the arc length of one complete rotation, well, that's going to be my circumference, which is going to be 2 pi, which is 2 pi r, actually, right? It's 2 pi multiplied by the radius, and which is the same as the circumference, like we said before. Okay? So... In other words here, the ratio of arc length over radius is the same thing as, well, my circumference, which is 2 pi r divided by r, which gives me 2 pi. And in this case here, when we're looking at 360, my arc length is going to be the same as 2 pi radians. Okay? Now let's take a look at my next one here. One half of a, one half of a circle is how many degrees? So if I went half the circle, the full circle is 360, or which is equal to, we found out, 2 pi, the circumference, and radians. Now, half the circle is going to be 180. Now, the arc length of that is going to be, well, half of 2 pi, which is going to just be pi, okay? And then it says the ratio of arc length over radius is the same thing as going to be pi times, oh, pi times the radius divided by the radius, which is equal to pi, okay? So now I have 180 is equal to pi radians. So this kind of sets up a ratio here. So let's take a look at class example one. It says convert from degrees to radians. So I'm going to convert this to degrees. So I know 270 over 180. We're talking about degrees, so I'm going to put pi on the bottom. And this is going to be my x. So if I want to solve for that x, all I'm going to do is multiply both sides by pi. Multiply this by pi, and I have 270 over 180 is, or 270 pi over 180 is equal to x. So I convert this, this is going to be equivalent to 3 over 2 pi, because both of these could be divided by 90. Okay? Now let's take a look at 315. So 315, this is in degrees, so my degrees is always in 180, is equal to something over, if we're looking radians, it's in terms of pi. If I want, I could use 360 and 2 pi there as well. Okay, so once again, we're going to get rid of my pi, solve for x, multiply by pi, multiply by pi. So 315 divided by 180, both of these could be divided by 45. 315 goes, uh, divided by 45 is 7 over 3, or sorry, 7 over 4, and that's going to be pi. Okay, is my answer for this one. So those are my two answers. Now it says to convert the following into the nearest tenth of a decimal. So I'm going to set up the same way. Not quite like we did, like the book wants you to. I'm just going to use this in the same way. So this is over degrees is equal to, now we have x over my, uh, we want the other side in radians, x over pi. So I push that into my calculator and I simplify this. We have to multiply both sides by pi, multiply by pi. And I'm going to end up getting here, punch this in, I go 70 divided by 180, and then we're going to multiply that by pi. It gives me 
and wants the nearest tenth, so that's going to be equal to 1.2. Now we want 205, same thing, divided by 180 is equal to x over pi, and so we multiply both sides by pi to cancel off my pi, so we get isolating x. So I have 205 uh, divided by 180, and we multiply that by pi, and that's going to give me 3.6. Okay? Now, let's take a look at class example number 3. Now we want to convert the following from radians to degrees. So we're going the exact opposite. So this is in radians here, so I want to divide this by pi, and we're going to, and this is equal to, well, something out of 180. Okay? So what we want to do is we're trying to find this x here, because this is my radian side, or this is my degree side now. So I multiply both sides by 180, multiply this by 180. So I end up getting my pi's cancel off, uh, 180 divided by, or multiplied by, uh, divided by 4 is equal to x, which is going to give me the same as 45 degrees. Okay? Now we're looking at this one here. I have negative 7 pi over 3. So we have a negative there. Same idea. We're going to divide this by pi because uh, we get, uh, and this side here is going to be x over 180. So the pi's cancel off, so that's going to end up giving me negative 7 over 3 multiplied by 180. 180 divided by 3 is going to be 60 times 7 is uh, 420. So that's negative 4, 2, 0 degrees. Okay? That's how we get that one. Okay, so now we want to do the same thing but to the nearest tenth of a decimal. Well, I look at that here. We want this. This is in radians, so I'm going to put over pi is equal to something over 180 degrees, and I'm going to kind of cross multiply. So I have, we put that in, we have 1.57, and I'm going to divide that by pi, and I'm going to times it by 180. And that's going to give me 89.95 to the nearest tenth, which will give me 90 degrees. And here we have negative 1.4 rads. So this is divided by pi, and is equal to something over 180. If we're looking in degrees, we want it in terms of degrees. So I times this here by 180. So I go negative 1.4 times 180, and we're going to divide that by pi, and that's going to give me. 80, negative 80.2 degrees. Okay? So now, we're going to look at how coterminal and reference angles affect radians, and we're going to look at them in radians. So, a coterminal angle are angles with the same terminal arm. They are separated by multiples of 360, which is the same as 2 pi's. Okay? Which is like Remember, we're looking in terms of circumference. Now, principal angle is always between 0 and 360, right? Because it's the smallest positive. So that's the same as 0 radians and 2 pi radians. So now, a reference angle. How do we find our reference angles? Well, if we remember before, in quadrant 1, we just used the reference angle. So that's just going to be, it is the reference angle. Okay. In quadrant 2, it's 180 minus the reference angle. Well, 180 is the same as pi, and then we're going to subtract the reference angle. Now, in quadrant 3, it is 180 plus the reference angle, if you remember. So that's going to be pi plus my reference angle. And then in 4, in quadrant 4, that is 360 minus the reference angle, which is the same as 2 pi minus my reference angle. So now we're going to get into some examples of how that works. So let's take a look here at question number five. So first it says in each of the following, draw the angle in standard position. So let's draw the angle in A in standard position. Well, if I look at this, this is zero. We know this is pi. This is the same as two pi. Well, half of pi from zero to pi, half of it is going to be pi over two. And now if we go another half here, so pi plus a half is going to be the same as 3 pi over 2. So looking at that, it wants to know where is 3 pi over 4? Well, 3 pi over 4 is going to be in here. So there's 1. 1 is done. Because 
pi over 3 pi over 4 is in between pi over 2 and pi. Now let's take a look at number 2. It says state the principal angle. Well, 3 pi over 4 is greater than 0 and between 2 pi, so my principal angle is just going to be 3 pi over 4. Let's take a look at number 3. It says determine one positive and one negative coterminal angle. So I'm going to take 3 pi over 4 and I'm going to add 2 pi to find one coterminal angle that's positive which is the same as this is going to be 8 over 4 which gives me uh, 11 pi over 4. Now another, so here's one, another one is going to be I could have 3 pi over 4 and I want to subtract 2 pi. Okay. Now I look at that, that's going to give me negative 5 pi over 8. And there is my other coterminal angle. So now I have a positive and a negative coterminal angle. Oop, 5 pi over 4, not over 8, my mistake there. Now we look at this one here. Number 4 says, uh, write an equation, write an expression involving the principal angle that represents all angles in the domain where theta is an element of all real numbers are coterminal with the angle. So for this one here, I'm going to look at number 4. We have 3 pi over 4, and we are always adding 2 pi times n, right, where n is an element of integers. And that's it. Class example number four says, determine the reference angle for each of the following uh, angle rotations. So I'm just going to do two of these here. So I want four pi over three. So four pi over three, if I look at that here, this is pi, this is going to be pi over two, this is going to be pi, or sorry, this is zero, pi over two, pi, and this is pi, three pi over two, and this is going to be the same as two pi, okay? so. 4 pi over 3 is greater than pi, but it's still, so it's like 1 pi and a third of a pi, so that's going to be here, which is 1 pi and half of a pi. Okay, so we know which quadrant it's in. Now, I look at that, that we want to take away 180 to figure out what that is. So I'm going to go 180 is the same as pi, so I'm going to go 4 pi over 3, and we're going to subtract pi. Well, pi is the same thing as saying 3 pi over 3, so that's going to give me pi over 3 is my answer. Okay? So, let's take a look at my next one here. We have negative 5 pi over 4. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here, except we're going from the negative. So, negative 5 pi over 4, so I go there, there's 1 pi, and then we're just a little bit more to go here. So, we're actually in quadrant 2. Now, I want to know this one here then, like that. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, 2 pi minus 5 pi over 4 to find my uh, my principal angle. Oh, minus, sorry, minus 2 pi, or sorry, 5 pi over 4, which will end up giving me a total of uh, 3 pi over 4. Okay? Now I look at this, we have uh, pi, so this part here is 3 pi over 4, we want to subtract, we go pi, subtract this to figure out this angle here, what we're missing from pi, so subtract 3 pi over 4 is going to give me pi over 4 as an answer. And that's it. Okay? So now let's look at question number seven. We're getting to some word problems here. It says a pendulum is 30 centimeters long and swings at a length of 45 centimeters. So I'm going to make a quick little drawing here. This is 30, and we know this dotted line here is 45 centimeters. Okay? So what angle does the pendulum swing? Well, we know arc length is equal to my radius times my ra radiance. So let's plug in what we know. We know A is equal to 45. My arc length is 45 centimeters. And we know my radius is equal to 30 centimeters. So I have 45 is equal to 30 multiplied by theta. 
So we divide both sides by 30, I get 1.5 is equal to theta. Now it also wants this in radians to the nearest tenth, we did that, and in degrees. So now I have to convert that to degrees. So I know 1.5 over pi, because degrees is in, or radians is in, degrees, is in terms of pi, is equal to, we have x over 180, because I want it in terms of degrees. So I grab my trusty calculator here, and multiply both sides by 180, I get 1 point, oops, 1.5 multiplied by 180, and we're going to divide that by pi, which is going to end up giving me 85.9 degrees. So these here are my two answers, okay? So let's take a look at question number eight. It says calculate the arc length to the nearest tenth of a meter of a sector of a circle with a diameter of 9.2 meters. And the sector angle is 150. So we have a section of a circle here. And well, this isn't really to scale, so I'm going to go this way. We know this is 150. And we have this section here is uh, we want to know and we know the diameter is 9.2, so if the diameter is 9.2, the radius is 4.6. So r is equal to 4.6. Uh, my theta is equal to 150. But anytime we're trying to find arc length, that's a distance, like a curved distance, we're going to have to do this in radians. We can't use degrees. That's a key thing. So I'm going to divide this by 180 and multiply by pi, which is going to give me the same as both these 30, which is 5 over 6 pi. Okay? Now, let's plug in our formula. A is equal to r theta. So we have my radius is equal to 4.6 multiplied by 5 over 6 pi. I multiply this together, I'm going to get 12 meters is going to be my distance and to the nearest tenth, it's 12.0 actually, okay? All right, so number nine says, a circle with a center C and a minor arc AB is 15.2 is shown. So angle ABC, so ABC is pi over six. And then my angle CAB is pi over six or BAC is pi over 6. Find the length of the radius of the circle. So I want to find this radius. So first of all, I have to find this angle C here. So how do I find angle C? Well, we know all angles in a triangle add up to 180. Now in terms of radians, 180 is the same as pi. So I know A, angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to pi. So in other words, we have pi over 6 plus pi over 6 plus c is equal to pi. Now we rearrange that. I'm going to end up getting, uh, here we go, we're going to get pi, and we're going to subtract pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is pi over 3. And that's going to be angle c. So then angle c is actually equal to 2 pi over 3. So now I know my theta, okay? So let's take a look at this here. I have theta is equal to 2 pi over 3, and we know my arc is equal to 15.2. So we go A is equal to my radius times theta, and we're going to plug in A, so we have 15.2 is equal to my radius times 2 pi over 3, or 2 over 3 pi, and we divide that, so that's going to be, move this here, so it's 3 over 2 pi. This cancels off, so we're just trying to find what r is. r is equal to, put this quickly in my calculator, so I'm going to have uh, 3 times 15.2, and I'm going to divide that by 2, and divide that by pi, and I'm going to get 7.25 is my answer, so 7.3. And that is in centimeters.